Hello everyone! It's time for our Facebook Live. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to pop on here if anyone's going to be live. Ooh, this is my 10th broadcast according to Facebook. <laughs> um, I'm just going to set up on my computer over here and see if anyone's going to jump on live, so I'll give you a minute. Let me refresh my screen and get my notes up here. If you're wondering why I'm looking down here, my computer's here, and that's where my notes are for today's talk. Sure, I mute myself so I don't hear myself talking. Doesn't look like anyone is joining us live yet, so I'm still going to take a minute to set up, but I'll just continue on and you can watch it on the replay. I'm going to try to keep this one a little shorter because uh, they've been getting longer and longer <laughs> each week. Um, and today I'm going to talk about blogging best practices. So we're going to talk about formatting and search engine optimization. So it's nothing really new. Um, but if there, we have a lot of new people in the group, so if you're watching this, it may be new to you. So I hopefully it'll be helpful, and you can always use a refresher on this topic as well. I know I can um, for myself as well. So let's see. This is our fourth Facebook Live in the 30-Day Blogging Challenge. Um, and again, at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to give away the Week 3 prize, uh, but I'll save that till the end. Um, and uh, I'm going to take a sip of water and then I'm going to get started. It doesn't look like anyone's on live yet, but like I said, I'm just going to keep recording because you can watch it later. And if you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. Even if you're watching it on replay, I'll check back later. I'm sorry, my setup's a little shaky today. Um, and I will answer them afterwards. Um, and I'm very red today for some reason. Just got out of the shower. Um, okay, so blogging best practices. First thing I want to talk about this week is formatting. Uh, it's very important for your readers and for search engine optimization that you format your posts um, in an in easy to read format. So just to give you some tips, um, a lot of people, actually more than 40% of people who consume content on the web nowadays are consuming it on a mobile device. So you want to think about what your blog posts look like when someone's reading it on a phone. So one of the most obvious things is you want to have shorter paragraphs. So even if um, your post is long, if you break it up in shorter paragraphs, it just looks easier to read on the phone. It doesn't look so overwhelming and people are more likely to keep scrolling and keep reading. And if you use bullet points or you want to number your points, that even makes it a little easier for people. Um, and uh, to break up the, your, um, your post into sections and to put uh, subheads in it. Um, especially for the search engines, they like to see your text broken up and they like to see subheads in a font that's either um, typically uh, in HTML they call it an H1 tag or an H2 tag or an H3 tag and they're just different sizes. H1 is normally what your headline font would be and H2 is normally a subhead and then if you have a sub subhead it would normally be an H3. Um, uh, your blogging software probably does that automatically if you, you, you probably don't have to go in and code it by hand. Um, you can probably choose a subhead or something like that uh, at the top. I know that with um, with WordPress, um, uh, I always just go into the code and, and type it in because I'm just used to doing it that way. Um, but you can set things up to just say headline or subhead. Um, so uh, breaking up the text into short paragraphs, breaking sections of your text and of your post up with some subheads. And if you can try to work your keywords for whatever you're you're t discussing in that topic into your subheads, that's even better. You definitely want to have your keywords in your headline. So one of my formatting tips today is also how you write your headlines. Because when you do your, uh, when you decide what your keywords are for that post, and we've talked about keywords before, and I'll, I'll get into that a little later, that you want your keywords to be long tail keywords. So you don't just want it to be candle or soap or how to, or you know, you want it to be something long like how to make lavender soap could be a long tail keyword. And it will still pick out those individual words that are in that keyword. But when they're strung together, you have a better chance of ranking for, um, for that long tail keyword because it's really hard to work for something that's really a general term like candle or just soap or, you know, uh, or, you know, just one word like that. Cause everyone is, is, uh, the larger corporations really are going to have them. I mean, if you type in soap, you're probably not even going to get Procter & Gamble first. You're probably going to get a soap opera or something like that because the term can mean so many different things. Um, 
And if you can, if you have the ability in your blogging software to change the font of your post. I think I, I use mine now at a size 18 font, and the default when I just write a post normally in WordPress, it normally defaults to a 14 point type, which is fine, but um, when it's on a mobile de device, it's pretty small, and it's kind of become the standard now to have your font be larger. So I bought my font up to 18. You'd have to figure out how to do it in your particular theme that you're using, or within your particular software that you're using if you're not using WordPress. Um, but um, it really helps uh, for people to read it more clearly. It looks nicer on the page now. It's not that you're, it doesn't look like small text can be a little overwhelming for people. They see all these paragraphs with tiny text. Um, and sometimes they can get lost in everything else that's going on around on your website. Um, so it helps it stand out. And um, my other formatting tip would be at the very end of your post, um, to repeat your keyword. So if you're writing how to make lavender soap or something like that, um, and you want your first paragraph, you want to use your keyword in your first paragraph, um, and you want to say, I'm going to teach you how to make lavender soap, blah, 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 whatever. And then at the end of your post, if you can repeat your keyword and then encourage people to comment on your site by asking them a question or encouraging discussion in some way, so that at the end you wrap up your post by saying, so that's how you make lavender soap, and you want to work your keyword into it again and then say, have you ever made lavender soap? Or what is your favorite scent? Or, you know, you'd want to ask them some kind of question that pertains to your blog post to encourage them to interact with your with your posts in some way. Um, so you're creating a community. So, and people will answer each other's comments sometimes, or maybe they encourage them to ask a question if they, if they don't understand your instructions or if they just want to know more on a certain topic that they can ask you a question. And then always make sure to go back and check your comments. And if you start getting loads and loads and loads of comments, you obviously don't have to answer every single one. But if you show some kind of presence in there that you are responding, people will be more likely to ask you a question or post a comment again because they know you're actually reading them and you're not going to just ignore it like they're writing it into thin air. Um, so sometimes I will check my, my comments and I try to reply to them within the first few days of posting um, one of my blog posts, but then that lives up there forever. If someone finds it six months later and happens to post a comment, I may or may not see it. Sometimes my software will tell me that, you know, it'll be obvious that someone has commented, but sometimes I don't need, I don't notice right away. Um, so really, I just try to do it in the first few days after I do a post so that it's kind of an active discussion for a while. And then people don't really expect if it's an older post for you to get back to them after a long time. So that's my tips on formatting. There were five of them. I'll just recap them real quickly. So your headlines and titles, you want them to, um, they should be in an H1 font. Well, your, your blogging software should do that automatically. You just put it in the headline field. You want it to contain your keywords, and you want it to contain your keywords in the front end of your post. If you use a, um, a, a plugin like, like I use Yoast SEO, and it has, um, it'll, It'll analyze each post that I do and tell me whether or not I was doing the things that I should be doing well. And sometimes it'll say your your keyword is in your headline, but it's not at the beginning of the of the headline. So you might want to try to reword it. So if you have how to make lavender soap and lavender soap was your keyword, you might want to say put it up in front and say lavender soap, five tips on how to make it at home or something like that. So you might want to just try to play with the words and the arrangement of words to have your keywords toward the front. Um, breaking your text up into short paragraphs, breaking your entire post up into some sections that you have some subheads, using a larger font if your blogging software permits it. Um, and if, not, if you can't figure out how to do it, you can usually write to um, the help section of whatever blogging software you're, you're using. And sometimes they can give you, tell you how to do it or, or they can give you a cheat code on how to do it. Um, and then at the end, encouraging discussion at the bottom. So each blog post, you should have sort of an introductory paragraph, all of your points in the middle broken down, and then at the end a little recap that encourages the discussion. If you follow that format, it will really it will really help your readers to understand what they're getting into with the post, and it will really help the, help the search engines know that you know what you're doing when you're formatting a post, and it's easier for them to read because they're not reading it intelligently, they're reading it with a computer, but they're looking for certain things to happen, and they're looking for those H1, H2 codes, they're looking for short paragraphs and they're going to look to see that people are interacting with your post by commenting and asking questions. So the second section that I wanted to talk about today for blogging best practices is search engine optimization. And I mentioned earlier using long tail keywords. 
And um, you can actually, uh, the, the site Yoast, if you go to, I think it's just yoast.com, I'll, I'll find the links and I'll put them in the, in the comment section below for anything that I mentioned during this post. They have um, a, a long tail keyword generator. So if you're not sure how to create a, a long tail keyword and you want to write about lavender soap or you want to write about a beeswax candle or something like that, you can type that term into their keyword extender tool and just type beeswax candle and then it'll give you a bunch, it'll pay, like a, a big long scrolling page of variations on that where you, how you can extend it out. and. They base that on people who have been using them or people who have been searching for those terms. So they're not just making them up randomly. They're, they're giving you some hints of, of what types of keywords to use. So if you type in beeswax candle, it might say beeswax candles clean the air or something like that. And, and, or beeswax candles and how to make them or, or beeswax candles, you know, and, and their natural fragrance or lavender soap and how to use it or lavender soap is the oldest soap known to man or you know like they it might not be that long but they'll give you ideas of how to extend your keywords and if you do something like if you make candles um, and you're kind of saying okay well I'm running out of keywords to use every time I write about candles because I'm you know feel like I'm writing about the same thing all the time these can give you ideas of how to vary your keywords in your post so long tail keywords and I will put that link to the keyword extender tool down below after we're finished here another thing you can do is to use synonyms. So you don't always have to use the exact keyword. You do want to use the exact keyword in your headline, your first paragraph, and maybe repeat it throughout your post several times depending on uh, how long your post is. You want to have a certain percentage of using your keyword. But you can also use synonyms. So, uh, and the search engines are smart enough to recognize that. So um, I used the example before when I've talked about this subject. I used to write about cars. And we could use car, we could use auto, we could use truck and SUV. You, know, you could use certain things that, that the search engines know, um, they're smart enough to know that they mean the same thing. So you don't want to have to repeat the word car, 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 all throughout a post if you're writing about a car. You can say auto or automobile or truck or SUV or compact car or you know the variations on the term. And you can do that with, with any keyword. Um, and it just kind of, it, it keeps you from repeating the same word so that you're not just writing for the search engines because you want to write for the people who are reading your post. You don't want it to be just for the search engine spiders. You want it to be something that people will understand and, and enjoy reading. Another thing uh, that search engines look for is linking between your, co your own content, so internal links. So if you mention one of your products, you want to link to your product. Or if you mention that this is part two of a blog post, you want to link to part one. Or if you say, this week we're discussing beeswax candles last week we talked about soy candles and then you can link over so linking so that your all the content on your website is an interconnected network now you don't need to link to everything every time but just knowing that you're building up this web of content that is interconnected so you are the master you are the authority on that subject so if you're writing about candles and all your posts are about different types of candle topics or all of your posts are about different kinds of soap topics or like Sharon writes about medical terms and right now she's doing a fitness challenge so all of these posts that she's talking about are different kinds of of nutrition and fitness and wellness terms and they could be interlinking those posts together so you could say like last week I talked about calcium and today we're talking about magnesium or something and you can link to those back and forth between your posts and another big thing they like to see is that you're linking outside of your content so you're not just linking within yourself so a lot of times like Sharon is a good example of this she always gives um, her sources of where she got her content and she links out to them so that you can confirm her her facts that she's talking about and she boils those facts down into uh, easy to understand terms for the layperson who's reading her content well she will always link back to the medical study or a definition of a term that she uses and she's linking outside of her site to other places that have authority on the web so it shows that you are connected to other authoritative sites and that you are an authoritative site too. I hope that makes sense. Um, and the last thing for search engine optimization is what I talked about when we first uh, started this post, which is about formatting. So formatting does matter to the search engines, not just to um, your readers. So for, for this section where we're talking about search engine opti optimization, 
long tail keywords, using synonyms, internal links, external links to, author to authoritative sources, and formatting. And that is all that I have for you today. I wanted to just keep it short and sweet because I think most of you know this content. It's just really good to, to get a refresher. And there are all kinds of places where you can do keyword research online. Uh, you can use the, the, key, the Google Keyword Planner tool, um, but they have wrapped that up now in AdSense, and you kind of have to have an AdSense account to be able to access it. It used to be free. Um, what I've done recently is I have gone through the motions as if I'm setting up an AdSense ad and did some keyword research, and then I paused the ad but it still gave me access to the keyword tool and they're probably going to crack down on that eventually. Um, but if you do want to use the Google Keyword Planner and you're not running Google Ads, that is a good way to, um, to get access to that keyword planning tool. And a really easy way to do keyword research is to just go to Google and start typing in what you think will be your keyword and seeing what it suggests right away, you know, how it auto fills in underneath. And, or <clears throat> typing in a keyword hitting enter, seeing what results you get, and then scrolling down to the bottom of that first page, and there will be a lot of suggestions down there, and you might find keyword, long tail keywords that you could use there. You can also do that in YouTube, because YouTube is a giant Google search engine um, owned by Google, and people type things in there um, <clears throat> on every topic you can think of. So the same thing, if you start to type something into the, into the YouTube, YouTube search bar at the top, it'll start to auto fill in what it thinks you want and you'll see a bunch of suggestions and you might get some suggestions there. And also when you, if you click into someone's video on YouTube, sometimes you can see um, the related posts that come up on the side there. Uh, this shows everything backwards. So if you're looking at YouTube this way and they'll have related posts down on the side um, and you'll see what it's considering related content to that keyword that they're using for that video. Um, there's also a, a, a tool called, um, it's by Sumo Me, uh, which is a company that does a lot of um, plugins and things for the web, um, but it's called BuzzSumo, and it's a good way if you type in your keyword into BuzzSumo, and again, I'll leave the, all these links down below, it will tell you what are the most popular posts that use that keyword on the web. It'll give you a list of content from around the web that has used that keyword in the order of popularity. And sometimes you can find, um, it's a good way to find sites that are authoritative in your field that you may want to link to. So if you're trying to find places to link out to externally, when you look up the keyword in the BuzzSumo tool, you'll see how people use the keyword. So it's kind of a good place to learn how to use a keyword and how to craft a post around it. It might give you some ideas. You don't want to copy people, obviously, but you can always be inspired by them. And uh, sometimes you'll find some interesting blogs that you might want to read yourself if it happens to be on your topic and that you may want to share content back and forth with them or comment on them and see if they, if you start getting their attention, maybe they'll come back, comment back on you. So there are three ways to do some keyword research. Um, actually, that's four ways. So uh, you can use the Google Keyword Planner tool, which is now in AdSense. You can use Google itself and see what it suggests. You can use YouTube and see what suggestions come up. And then you can use the Buzz, C, the Buzz Sumo tool um, which can give you ideas on what kind of post people are writing with those keywords. So I think that about wraps up our content uh, for this week. So um, I want to give out this week's award, and I, I don't see her on here live, but this week's award um, is for consistency of content, um, for always being informative, well-researched posts, and for always linking out to sources um, where you can go for, where you can tell what she got her, her information from and if you want to continue further reading. So this week's prize goes to Sharon McLaughlin for her um, medical post that she's been doing during her fitness challenge. And she also just did a redesign. It sort of happened, I, I've just seen it for the past two days, and it looks really clean and nice. And I just think she's a very well-rounded blogger who writes with authority. She is definitely an authority when you go on her blog and... Um, always tells you where she got her information so it backs up her post with with facts from medical journals and other places where you can go and continue reading if you're really interested in that topic. So congratulations to Sharon. I will contact you after. I don't see you on here but I will contact you afterwards and uh, let you know that uh, how to claim your $10 Amazon gift card. 
Um, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, again, you can please feel free to write any comments or ask me any questions down below, and I will check back later and see if anyone has anything to, that they um, want to be coached around on their blog. And uh, other than that, thank you for joining me on a Sunday instead of our usual Monday. Um, we'll probably be back to Monday next week, but I don't know. Sunday works pretty well because um, I think a lot of people are off and you'll have time to look at this later. Um, so let me know what you prefer, if you prefer Sunday or Monday, and uh, I'll see you again next week. We are on day 21 today, so we really don't have much time left. Nine more days to the challenge, so good luck and keep blogging. Even if you've missed a few days, just keep going. Just keep going because it's more than you've ever done before, and you're winning by blogging. So thank you. Bye-bye.